Hey there, welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure Visual Studio to help you write and compile assembly programs. This tutorial assumes that you already have successfully installed Microsoft Visual Studio. If you have not done that yet, you might want to check out the link below to a tutorial I did demonstrating how to install Visual Studio. But in this video, we're going to assume that you've already done that, so let's begin. All right, so what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to select File, New, Project. Okay, we'll want to create an empty project, and we'll call this project Mazin. And go ahead and click OK. Once we've done that, we're going to need to change some settings, clean up the solution a little bit. So let's do that. These little shortcuts here we don't need. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete those. Right, once I've done that, I'm gonna make a couple property changes. So let's right click on MASM up here and select build dependencies, select build customizations, and then you'll see a list of checkboxes. One of these is for MASM, MASM. So we'll wanna click that and then click okay. Once we've done that, we'll wanna set up one more property. So we're gonna go back and right click on MASM again you can go to properties down here and under configuration properties under linker under system we're going to want to select subsystem windows okay once we've done that go ahead and hit okay and at this point let's save what we've done so far for future uses right it's for future projects so we don't have to reconfigure that every single time and in addition let's put a starting template file in here okay and we're going to do that by right clicking on masm clicking add new item go ahead and select c plus plus file we're, we're not going to save it as a c plus plus file it's just going to be a plain old text file but we're going to save it as part of our project here for future use so let's just call this main.asm okay now once we've done that let's make a template here this will be the default code that will be loaded into our solution whenever we create a new assembly project right so let's go ahead and do that so we'll set this default up for the 386 instruction set we'll use a memory model of flat and I mean you can write whatever template you want in here but this is what I'll put in do, 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 do. Okay, let me set up my stacks, my stack size, 4096, gives it process proto, gives it code is a D word, okay. data segment, code segment, and then we'll set up a main procedure here. And this main procedure is where we'll write our assembly code. Here, and then define your variables in the data segment. Okay, let's close that main procedure. And then let's end the assembly program itself. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to, this is, this is our default, right? So whenever we create a brand new project, we want to be in this state. We want to have everything set up, ready to go to compile and run. And we want to have this default code file template so we don't have to rewrite this stuff all the time. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to project, export template, Go ahead and save if you haven't yet. Okay, project templates what we want. Leave all the defaults. Click finish. This window is going to pop up. You can go ahead and close that. Okay, now let's close this solution and let's start a new one. All right, new project. And notice now that underneath the selections that we that we have. 
right, we've got a new one, Masm. That's the one that we just saved. So let's go ahead and select that. And I'll name this new project Demo2, I guess. Go ahead and click OK. Now everything is already set up and configured as we just saved it. So if I double click on main.asm, there's my template, right? And if I go and right click on the properties and take a look, Masm checkbox already there, right? So I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go ahead and start compiling and running my program. I can go ahead and write this thing and, and do it. So let's just add a couple of numbers together and run the debugger just to verify that this works. I didn't make any mistakes anywhere. So I'll just go ahead and put inside of the AX register three, right? And then I'll put inside the BX register eight. Okay, and then I'll add those things together. I'll add the BX register to the AX register and that'll be enough for that. Okay, so let's go ahead and run the debugger to test to make sure that everything works great and we'll have the debugger start at line 10. So I'll right click on line 10, select run to cursor. Okay, and my register window pops up here. So I can go ahead and see what all the registers are currently set to. If that didn't pop up for you, then you can go to the debug menu, select Windows, and then scroll down and select the registers option. And that'll bring this window up for you. Okay, so anyway, so I got this thing open. Uh, I haven't executed line 12 yet. So my EAX registers got garbage in it. My EBX registers got garbage in it, but you know, let's just step through this thing one at a time, one line at a time. So we'll go ahead and move to EAX3. You can see that EAX is updated up there in red. Let's then step into e the next line where we're going to assign 8 to EBX. So you can see that updated. And then let's do the last instruction, the add instruction. So we'll step into that and you can see that EAX is updated to B in hex, right? If you were expecting to see 11, too bad, so sad, that is displayed in hexadecimal, right? But B is 11 in, in hex. So that's everything. I'll go ahead and kill the debugger here. So in this video, just to summarize, we're done. We're, we're good to go. Showed you how to configure an already installed version of Visual Studio to compile assembly programs, right? To write and compile assembly programs. Uh, showed you how to save that configuration for future projects. If you found this video helpful, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Hitting that like button really helps the channel out a lot. If you're a student of mine, as usual, please feel free to stop by my office hours or shoot me an email if you have any further questions. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.